Okay, thank you. Sorry for the delay. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is uh, Xianzong Chen. You can call me Sam. I'm working at Harvard University. Uh, many thanks to uh, for the invitation and uh, uh, instruction. Uh, before I start my talk, I'd like to thank all my uh, PhD students, postdoc, and visiting scholars. Uh, some of them uh, have already got an academic position. Uh, very happy for that. And in the last uh, 10 years, I'm fortunate enough with uh, top researchers all over the world. And I also have uh, close connections with the local uh, industry, like uh, Randy Shaw, ST Microelectronics. We have recruited, uh, recruited uh, NCD students to pursue the uh, uh, commercial value of our uh, uh, optical elements. Here comes the outline of my talk today. Uh, first, I'd like to say something about uh, the background of a metal surface. Uh, for example, what are metal surfaces and what are unique properties can be achieved with uh, uh, metal surfaces. Uh, then move on to the second part. I'm going to highlight uh, my work uh, in optical metal surfaces and uh, also in optical uh, devices. Uh, including the metal lenses, uh, multifunctional uh, devices, polarization sensitive holograms, uh, multi channel device, and polarization manipulation. Uh, very recently, we have uh, uh, generated uh, 3D polarization structures. Finally, I'm going to summarize my talk. For math materials, we knew uh, there are artificial materials uh, which can uh, obtain uh, optical properties from uh, the structures rather than from the composition materials. Uh, we can uh, mimic the materials in uh, nature. Uh, with the metal materials, uh, we can enjoy uh, the engineering uh, freedom in uh, material responses. Uh, the most well-known examples uh, include the uh, invisibility cloak, uh, super imaging, and the negative uh, uh, refraction. Uh, in the optical range, uh, it's a big challenge for fabrication, especially uh, 3D nanostructures, very difficult to fabricate. Uh, instead of using uh, 3D nanostructures, uh, Professor Capasso proposed to use a uh, 2D uh, nanostructures. It will be much easier for fabrication. Uh, metal surfaces are 2D counterparts of uh, uh, metal materials. Uh, metal surface technology is very attractive and it was selected as one of top 10 emerging technologies in 2019. Uh, the figures here, I think you are very uh, familiar uh, for the metal lens, a uh, big impact. Uh, you can see this is a very tiny device. Uh, it has a high numerical aperture and also uh, the efficiency also very high. Uh, with the metal surfaces, uh, you can arbitrarily control uh, the amplitude, uh, the phase, uh, the polarization, and also uh, the frequency as well. From the point of view of uh, uh, fabrication, uh, is compatible with conventional semiconductor processing. Uh, so you can dramatically uh, decrease the fabrication cost for mass production. Here is an example uh, about a you know, mass surface device and uh, the normal you know, diffractive optical elements. Uh, we use a, a lens uh, as an example. For conventional, uh, refractive uh, lens. Uh, they are very bulky uh, by controlling the surface geometry. Uh, so it is convex or concave, very bulky. For conventional diffractive uh, lens, uh, much, much thinner, uh, the phase uh, is introduced through the propagation the inside material. Uh, this, uh, for the initial number of uh, two pa parts, uh, they can be removed, so much thinner. Uh, for the metal lens, uh, is a uh, phase, uh, you know, is uh, generated through the interaction with the nano uh, structures, so they are uh, much thinner, two D, uh, uh, two D nano structures, 
And for the metalings design, uh, you can enjoy more degrees of freedom than diffractive lenses. For example, uh, by designing uh, different uh, nanostructures, you can uh, not only to uh, control the phase, you can also control uh, the polarization and dispersion property. Uh, this uh, review paper is very good. Uh, I'd like to encourage you uh, to have a look if you like. Here is an example about a uh, uh, metal surface. Uh, we just use a, a single unicell uh, with, uh, uh, with a nanopillar here. Uh, for this nanopillar, uh, the three dimensions, uh, the weights, the height, and also the length. Uh, for the incident light, suppose uh, it's a left-handed uh, left uh, circularly polarized light. On the transmission side, you can see uh, for this is the polarization state of the light, uh, you know, it's a uh, you can see the change is right-handed. For this part, it's still the same polarization state of the light. Uh, with this uh, uh, nanopillar, actually you can generate a geometric phase. How to generate? For, this, uh, for the same uh, nanopillar, by controlling the orientation, you can generate a, a phase. For the uh, geometric phase, for geometric phase is uh, associated to the change of the polarization state of the light. And for this uh, uh, relation, it's very simple. Suppose you know, uh, the angle is theta. Uh, we use uh, the horizontal direction, uh, the reference uh, direction. So this uh, the value is two theta. For this uh, two theta, the sign uh, can be swapped by controlling uh, the polarization state of the light from LCP to RCP. So this is a polarization sensitive uh, geometric phase. On this side, this is a propagation phase by controlling the phase size of a uh, nanopillars. For example, you control uh, you know, the width, the height, and also the length. So this is not a polarization sensitive. By controlling propagation phase and uh, geometric phase, Simultaneously, we can develop a lot of uh, unusual uh, optical devices. In the last uh, 10 years, there are many uh, types of uh, metal surfaces. Uh, the first version uh, from uh, uh, Professor Capasso group and Shalav's group, they use uh, V-shaped uh, structures. But later on, you know, uh, other types of metal surfaces have uh, come to the uh, world. And for myself, uh, since I worked at uh, University of Birmingham in Professor Schwanzant group, uh, we used uh, uh, metallic nanorolls. Uh, later on, I used uh, this uh, dielectric uh, uh, nanopillars like this. So they are much easier for fabrication. I also prepared several uh, review papers. Uh, if one note uh, the recent progress uh, in optical, optical metal surfaces and also seeing optical devices, I'd like to encourage you uh, to have a look. Yeah. I joined Harry Watt University uh, in 2013. I uh, have uh, um, worked uh, here for eight years, uh, more than eight years. We have developed a lot of uh, uh, interesting optical devices. Here are some uh, examples. The devices we have developed can be classified into four uh, categories. Sorry, just one second. Let me use the laser pointer. Okay, now it's much easier. So this is the, uh, the conventional lens. Once fabricated, the functionality is fixed. It is a convex, uh, you know, you can use that uh, to focus light or concave lens to diverge light. You cannot change the functionality, but here, the same lens, two different functionalities, convex lens or concave lens combined on the same device. This is a polarization sensitive uh, hologram. Uh, by controlling the polarization state of the light, we can dynamically change the holographic image here. For this work, it's multi-channel uh, device. Uh, here you can see the four channels. In each, each channel, we can generate a twisted light beam 
And by controlling the polarization state of the light, we can dynamically uh, control uh, the superposition of uh, optical vertex beams in each channel. Uh, this work is very interesting, a kind of game, a uh, hide and seek game uh, in the polarization profile of a light beam. And the uh, pixel size here is 300 nanometer by 300 nanometer. If uh, uh, no, pol no analyzer here uh, is a linear polarizer, you can see it's very uniform. You, uh, the, the, I mean, the intensity, you see nothing. But if you put a, uh, an analyzer here, you can see the high resolution grayscale image, uh, which is hidden in the polarization profile of this uh, uh, light beam. Uh, this is due to uh, polarity, uh, so this is a conventional uh, lens. Uh, the polarity uh, is fixed. Uh, here for this one, uh, this is a dual polarity uh, metal lens. Uh, two uh, different functionalities, convex lens and a concave lens, depending on the circular polarization state of the light. So this one is very colorful. You know, it's, it's a sample. We use the white light to shine that. It's very colorful. <laughs> It's just one, just for fun. Uh, this is the edge of this, uh, uh, this metal lens. Now you can definitely see a focal point. And later on, we uh, developed a, uh, the, uh, a lens, or a metal lens with uh, multiple focal points. And at each focal point, we can also control the polarization state of the light. This is a spherical lens. With a spherical lens, you can get a, a focal point for a plane wave. For a cylindrical lens, you can get a focal line. Uh, we combine two different lenses, a spherical lens and a cylindrical lens on the same device. It can also uh, work. Our experimental uh, results, for LCP, you can see a focal line, so definitely uh, a cylindrical lens. For RCP, a focal point. So it's a spherical uh, lens. And we also uh, achieved in, uh, imaging uh, with uh, this uh, metal lens as well. For the lens design, it's based on the phase modulation. So it's, it's very natural, you will think, uh, to use the metal surface to develop uh, uh, holograms. Uh, in 2013, uh, nearly the same time, uh, in Professor Shalav's group uh, from uh, Purdue University. Sorry, just my second. Okay, no, okay. So they use the V shaped structures, uh, so V shaped structures, uh, eight phase steps and two amplitude steps. And in Professor Shanzan's group, uh, we use uh, uh, metallic nanorolls. Uh, it can generate a continuous phase profile. And it's very amplitude, it's very uniform. It's uh, 3D, uh, it's, it's 3D plane. So this is very uh, interesting uh, stuff. So we use a, a circular, uh, circularly polarized light. Uh, they use a linearly uh, polarized light. For uh, the multifunctional device, uh, it's very attractive. For example, uh, this is a Swiss army knife, uh, very popular. It's basically when you travel, uh, you like it, since multiple uh, different functionalities on the same device. So inspired by this uh, uh, Swiss army knife, we uh, can combine totally different functionalities, like a hologram, a lens, we can device. Uh, this one uh, is a uh, uh, sort lens. Why is a sort lens? The focus of depth of this device is very long in comparison uh, with this uh, focal lens. And also uh, you can see the focal region, you can generate a multiple, you can see multiple focal uh, region, uh, two focal region. And in the focal region, we can also control uh, the polarization state uh, of the light. 
Uh, my previous, uh, previous uh, visiting scholar, Professor Xiaofi Zhang, he used this uh, salt lens for imaging uh, at terahertz range. They also got a very uh, interesting uh, results. For the single uh, layer metallic nanoparticles, uh, the conversion efficiency uh, is very low. Uh, how to improve the, the efficiency? Uh, Professor Zhang Zhang, uh, uh, they, uh, he proposed to use a triple layer. Uh, this is a metallic uh, uh, film, dielectric di layer, and also the nanoroles. By controlling the thickness of a uh, dielectric uh, layer, uh, they can generate a high efficiency uh, refractive uh, metal surface. So this is uh, basically this uh, FP cavity. Uh, Dr. Uh, Michel Kenny uh, made a big, contribution, a big contribution to this work. Uh, he knows uh, the details. Based on reflective uh, type of metal surface, we developed a, a high efficiency, high density multiplexed uh, metal surface uh, hologram. For the same device, if you shine uh, the device with a left handed circularly uh, polarized light, you can see uh, the holographic image, the flower here, uh, bee here. If you uh, change the polarization state of the light from left-handed to right-handed, you can see uh, the bee and the flower, the positions are swapped. So this is very interesting stuff. How to realize that the design is based on uh, the precise physical control and also uh, polarization sensitive uh, metal surface. We use the geometric uh, uh, metal surface. It's very sensitive uh, to circular polarization uh, state. This figure shows uh, the schematic of our experimental setup. Uh, we use a, a polarizer and a quarter wave plate to control the polarization state uh, of the light. Uh, this is just a leaf of paper with a small hole in the middle. This tiny guy, the yellow color, is our metal surface. When the light is shines on the metal surface for the reflected light beam on this A4 paper, you can see uh, the holographic images uh, with your naked eyes. By dynamically control the privacy state of the light, you can see the dynamic change of these uh, uh, images. Uh, these are experimental results. This uh, uh, white circle shows the, this uh, uh, small hole here. Uh, you can see for left-handed and right-handed, so you can see uh, they're, they're swapped. Light can be twisted, uh, just like a corkscrew. It uh, can have a, a, a spiral feed front. So how to, to realize that? Usually uh, just use a spiral uh, feed plate to do that. Uh, you can change uh, a plane wave uh, to a wave with a spiral uh, wave front. Uh, so what's the difference between uh, a normal plane wave and a vertex uh, beam? You can see uh, on the observation plane, you can see the big difference. For this Gaussian beam here, the light intensity in the circle, uh, in the center here, uh, the highest uh, uh, intensity here, gradually you can see becoming weaker and weaker. While for a vertex beam, it's quite different. It's a ring of light with a small hole in the middle. So this is kind of a unique signature. This is for, uh, for a vertex beam. We use a, a metal surface to generate a broadband uh, spiral uh, as kind of you know, a spiral uh, uh, plate, spiral field plate. It can work in the uh, whole visible and the infrared range can do that. And we can also uh, control the polarization profile of a, a vertex beam. So how to do that? We use a reflected, uh, reflective metal surface. Uh, this is based on uh, the superposition of uh, converted part and a non-converted part. Since the uh, left-handed light and right-handed light, there are two eigen, uh, you, know, you know the two secular provisions 
are buggy modes. So we can generate uh, any partition state of the light. This is a multi-channel device. Along this uh, horizontal direction, so this partition sensitive uh, holograms. So you can see if you change the partition state of the light, you can dynamically change, of, uh, uh, change the images here. Along the horizontal direction, you can control the generation of uh, voltage beams. By controlling the polarization state of the light, you can also uh, control uh, the superposition of uh, uh, voltage beams. The superposition of uh, voltage beams uh, is very, uh, very interesting. Uh, we uh, developed a, a multi-channel device to perform uh, such a very complicated uh, task. If you use a conventional optical system, it's very uh, complex. But here, we just use a single uh, metal surface device. We can, we can do that very easily to do that. When you shine the metal surface uh, with a, a pure circular position, suppose uh, right-handed, you can see uh, the polarization uh, uh, information at uh, different channels, four channels. If you change the polarization state from a right-handed to left-handed, you can see the polarization also uh, there is change as well. Apart from that, the topological charges of a, a vertex beam can also be changed as well. For a linear polarization, since it can be decomposed into left-handed, right-handed with the equal components, you can see the superposition of these uh, uh, these vertex beams. And the superposition of these vertex beams can generate very interesting vector beams. For example, here, if a topological charge equal to one and equal to minus one, are uh, right circular polarization, uh, left circular polarization, you can see you can generate a radial polarization profile. This is very uh, useful for high resolution uh, imaging. How do we know it's a radial polarization uh, profile? You just uh, uh, use a linear polarizer, that's okay. By controlling uh, the transmission axis of the linear polarizer, if you rotate, you can see the two petals can also be rotated as well. So this is very unique you know, property, you can see that. And for the superposition of, you know, for this one, you can see L equals three, L equals minus three, you can get six petals. If you increase the number, uh, for, for example, my uh, previous uh, PhD student, Fu Yong Yu, uh, recently, he used uh, uh, this number, is uh, 30, He can generate 60 petals. For this kind of a uh, uh, device can be used for uh, polarization measurement for the angle change, you know, the uh, accuracy is very high. For C proposition, uh, as I just mentioned, that can be also you know, can be used for the proposition detection. For this one here, uh, we use a different uh, uh, C propositions of uh, vertex beams. We can measure uh, the proposition state of the uh, incident light. Uh, for, for example, we can measure uh, the mid axis, uh, the ellipticity, the handedness of an incident uh, light. This is very uh, interesting. For a normal vertex beam, uh, usually you have to use a CCD uh, to see it. Uh, since our sample, uh, you know, the size, you know, uh, it's very, uh, very limited. But here, if we combine a spiral uh, feed profile and a feed profile for an hexagon, we can generate ring vertex beams. I like traditional uh, vertex beams. For the ring vertex beams, you can see it with your naked eyes. Since you know the, the size of this uh, uh, this figure, uh, you know the of the intensity profile is proportional to this distance between the, the screen and the, the, the sample. Very recently, uh, we use uh, uh, the superposition of uh, vertex beams to generate a composite uh, vertex beams. 
For a normal vertical beam, you know, we can see in the, the singularity only a sing, uh, single singularity. But here, uh, we have a multiple singularities. And also, the superposition of the singularities can also be uh, manipulated. This is very interesting uh, stuff. Uh, in this work, we use uh, uh, four uh, vertex beams. You can see the topological charges are given here. So you can see you know, the uh, singularity distribution. Uh, it's very interesting stuff. And also uh, during the propagation, you can also see the dynamic rotation of these patterns. And for these uh, uh, composite vertex beams uh, have a very unique you know, properties. For example, here for this one, uh, for each uh, small hole here uh, corresponds to uh, a single singularity. Uh, so you can also control you know, the, uh, the position of singularities, so which means you can engineer. So this one uh, is based on the superposition of vertex beams with the same circular polarization state of the light. And if you use the superposition of uh, vertex beams with a different uh, circular polarization state of light, you can generate vertex beams. So this is also very interesting. If you put a, a polar there, you can see the unique features uh, in the uh, intensity uh, profiles. So far, uh, we uh, just uh, discussed uh, the uh, device design based on field modulation. Actually, uh, we can also use the mesh surface to generate and control the privacy profile. Uh, here is an example. Uh, this is a reflective uh, type of mesh surface. We use the light to shine that uh, this, uh, this reflective type uh, reflective uh, beam. And in the polarization profile, for each uh, uh, pixel size here, 300 nanometer by 300 nanometer. And the uh, amplitude is very uniform. Uh, so you can see, you can see nothing here, only polarization state in each pixel is different. If you put an uh, analyze here, you can see the heating image is high resolution, grayscale image uh, in the polarization profile. Uh, the total number of intensity uh, uh, pixel number, you can find it here. Uh, this one is uh, 256 uh, levels, the grayscale. How to design such a device uh, based on Mellor's law? Uh, this is a transmission axis of two polarizers. If the angle between the two transmission axes is the theta, for the transmitted light, the intensity is governed by this formula. Now, how to encode this uh, uh, grayscale image? We just zoom in uh, this area. You can see uh, the intensity profile in each pixel. Now, based on this formula, we can get the polarization profile. Next, our work is to encode the polarization profile uh, to the metal surface, that's okay. Uh, it, which is realized based on the superposition of uh, uh, two different uh, uh, circular polarization uh, states. We also use this uh, uh, technique to generate uh, more uh, interesting uh, patterns. For example, this uh, uh, QR code, uh, if you scan it with your smartphone, you can visit my group website, uh, unfortunately, uh, I have just uh, you know, updated our group website. Uh, it cannot work now. In that uh, uh, design, uh, you can see it's off-axis uh, design. Although it can work in the broadband, but it cannot be used to hide a color image. How to do that? We use the dielectric matter surface. For a dielectric matter surface, uh, different uh, fish size correspond to different uh, you know, colors. So uh, by controlling the privacy profile and also the color filtering functionality, we can hide uh, a color image in the privacy profile. We can do that. How to do that? Our design was based on uh, a super uh, cell. For each pixel, uh, there are six pillars, six nanopillars along this direction. The two pillars exactly the same, including the orientation angle. 
But on this anti-diagonal direction, they're also the same. But the feature size, they're different. So they have a different response to uh, colors. By mixing them together, we can achieve color mixing functionalities. You can uh, get many uh, different colors. For simulation experiment, if you shine that matte surface with a single color, you can, although you can see uh, they agree very well, actually uh, they're fake colors, not a real uh, color image. If you shine the matte surface with two different colors, you can see uh, the, the color image. For the, this uh, uh, matte surface design, it's very robust. Uh, we, it can, can also be used uh, for the nonlinear vectorial matte surface for optical uh, encryption. Uh, in collaboration with uh, uh, Professor Guixin uh, Lisk uh, in China, uh, you, you can see uh, the experiment results and the simulation. They also agree uh, very well. Uh, very recently, uh, my student Yutner developed a multifunctional device. Uh, it can simultaneously generate a position profile in the middle. You can see here. You can hide uh, you know, uh, an image of a high resolution image of a, a Edinburgh castle. You can see it very clearly. Uh, in this area, the out area, we can generate a hologram. And you can see, or you can also see six uh, uh, dots here that can be used to get the polarization speed of the incident light. For normal lens, usually you just use that to, to focus light or diverse light. Actually, uh, for this lens, uh, it's very uh, unusual. We can use that to rotate the polarization speed of the light. For example, here, this is uh, for the linear polarization uh, incident light, the dielectric matter surface, two focal points. At each focal point, the polarization state can be rotated at a different angle. You can do that. We can also generate you know, multiple uh, focal points, and at each focal point, the polarization state is also is different. Uh, this can also be used for polarization detection as well. Uh, this work. Uh, is uh, the work here uh, is demonstrated uh, in the terahertz range in collaboration with other uh, groups. The math lens for polarization rotation is very uh, useful. Uh, recently, we use this uh, uh, methodology to design a math lens for generating a 3D polarization nodes. So this 3D polarization nodes, we know uh, they are very complicated, you can see, in 3D space here, just like that. And at each point here, each point on the 3D node, we can control its polarization uh, rotation. We can do that. How can we do that? Our design is based on this, uh, you know, the formula uh, here. So first, we know, you know, for any linear polarization, it can be decomposed into left-handed, right-handed, and uh, with same you know, equal components. And now I think we can combine you know, this uh, uh, information in the matter surface design. Um, for the left-handed and the right-handed, it can generate a polarization rotation. So this is the, uh, the coordinates of uh, any point, an arbitrary point on this 3D nodes, the equations are given here. So basically this is a multiple uh, focal points, uh, multiple focal points but the number uh, is huge. So it just uh, looks like you, know, this, uh, uh, you can see the continuous patterns here. How do we know it's a 3D polarization profile at a different uh, observation plane? You can see the change of this uh, 3D north. You can see that. And also, if you put a polarizer in front of, of your camera, you can also see, if you rotate the, the polarizer, you can see the unique features of the in intensity profiles. You can see the gap here, the gap here. So which uh, uh, indirectly confirm the existence of the 3D polarization nodes. Uh, nearly the same time in Professor Carpazzo group, 
they use a matte surface to generate uh, uh, also in this polarization rotation along this uh, uh, propagation direction. This is uh, our recent work on color selective uh, 3D polarization uh, structure. By controlling the wavelengths of the instant light, you can control the structures, the 3D uh, polarization structures. Uh, this work is uh, under review uh, in uh, light science and applications. I think now it's time to, to see something about the metal surface uh, for the future work. Uh, we can see metal materials uh, have uh, uh, brought, brought us a lot of you know, good ideas and uh, you know, new concepts. But for the metal surface uh, in the visible range, I think uh, have made them more practical. And for the uh, metal surface in the outer thin, outer uh, flat, so the ideal for uh, device miniaturization and system integration, and especially, uh, especially the current you know, dielectric metal surfaces uh, in the visible range and the near infrared, you know, uh, high efficiency. And the single device you know, it has a, a very uh, unusual device uh, functionality. For example, this one, a tiny device, you know, can see the high numerical aperture and high efficiency as well. And for this one, this is the conventional uh, objective. If you cut it, you can cut through, you can see there are many, many lenses, you know, uh, aligned you know, together. So this, uh, which means, you know, the, uh, the facing, you know, the transmission uh, is not good. For a metal surface, uh, it can also, uh, you know, they are compatible with the conventional, you know, uh, nanofabrication processing. You can easily, you know, scale it up for mass production. Uh, Professor uh, Capasso Group, uh, they have uh, done a lot of uh, interesting work. They use uh, R line step uh, uh, lithography. This you can see uh, this uh, EFO uh, into wafer. And if you divide it, uh, you can get many, many uh, pieces. Tiny, each tiny piece is a, a very special uh, device. Uh, they also have a spin out uh, company. And for the metal surfaces, uh, if you combine uh, them with you know the other devices like you know weave guide and you know like in you know, the fiber, you can also realize the different functionalities. For example, polarization controllable uh, light switch, and also with the uh, active metal surfaces like you know flexible metal surface, stretchable, configurable, and also with the uh, uh, liquid crystal, uh, you can achieve many uh, new functionalities as well. And in comparison with uh, Commercial SL, SLM, uh, the resolution much higher, sub wavelength resolution, and then which means the you know, new uh, high depressing orders, and also it have uh, they have a provided new uh, tools for the fundamental uh, science. For example, the OM manipulation, and for you know the quantum entanglement or something. Uh, I had I don't have a you know. A, a, specialized knowledge in quantum entanglement, but my uh, colleagues here, they got a lot of uh, very good experience. For active uh, metal surface devices, uh, they're also very uh, attractive. Uh, Professor Harry Awata uh, has made a big contribution in this uh, uh, research field. Uh, to summarize my talk, uh, for the metal surfaces, they are uh, from the point of view of a fabrication, they're compatible with semiconductor processing. Uh, they are also thin, also flat, so they are very good for system integration. We have developed a lot of uh, unusual optical devices at visible and the near infrared range. Uh, we have also used that for different applications. For example, polarization detection and polarization imaging. Uh, we have already achieved some uh, very interesting results. Uh, we use uh, uh, metallic nano rods and dielectric nano pillars. Uh, they are much easier for fabrication. Of course, you know we are also uh, very interested in uh, active metal surface devices. Uh, very recently, I have recruited uh, an institute student uh, in collaboration with uh, uh, ST Microelectronics. Hopefully, we can get more uh, interesting uh, results. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, any questions or comments are welcome. Thank you.
Hello, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, just um, if you have any um, questions, you can put them in the chat or you can use the raise your hand function on Zoom if anyone mm -hmm. has any questions. Okay. Oh, I can see there is a set box. Probably this is the uh, last time, as maybe a lot of people. Excellent. We've got a question from David. Oh. Okay. Thank you, David. Thank you very much for your uh, interesting question. Uh, we just use uh, electron beam lithography to, to do that. And some groups, they also use uh, FIB for the small size uh, uh, metal surfaces. Oh, it's dielectric uh, in all dielectric metal surfaces. Okay, uh, the material we use uh, amorphous, uh, amorphous silicon, uh, titanium dioxide uh, from a capacitor group and also uh, gallium nitride as well. I think uh, uh, Mitch also use uh, uh, you know also use amorphous silicon. For myself, I mainly use amorphous silicon. Oh, and David Newman's got his hand up. So if you'd just like to unmute David. Hi. Yeah. Very interesting talk. Thank um, you. But um, yeah, um, this may just be me misunderstanding a diagram from um, slide nine. Uh, slide like... number nine. Okay, let me. Sorry, according to. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry about that. Okay. Uh, oh, slide oh, number nine. Yeah, maybe. I think it's with. Yeah, it's here. Yeah, that yeah. one. Yeah. So you've got the input of left circularly polarized light. Um, mm -hmm. output of left and right socially polarized yes and just um want to quick check but the left polarized the output lights do they have kind of different source points i mean i'm just thinking in terms of like dichroism experiments when you have a different you take the difference of different polarized lights and i was just and it can be critical whether there's the overlap, otherwise you're going to be probing different positions of the sample with different mm -hmm. polarizations. So I was just wondering really how kind of close are the source points or if you were to try and use it in, in some sort of dichroism experiment, you'd have to, I guess, use optics to align. But yeah, just, I don't know if you've tried that. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for a very nice question. Uh, actually here, I just use this uh, kind of schematic. <laughs> this is a schematic, and it's just a, draw a single you know, pixel to, to 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 explain that. Actually, this is not very uh, not very uh, accurate. So you, you know, uh, of course, for example, for the hologram design stuff, you know, there are many many you know multiple you know uh, you know the uh, the light points that were contributing you know, to the distribution of the electric field. So this is you know, not just a, a, <laughs> a schematic you know, to, to show that. I'm not sure whether uh, <laughs> I have it uh, clear or not. Uh, yeah, I, I get yeah, now. Perfect. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. You're welcome. Cool. So we've got a couple of questions in the um, chat. One from Nityan saying, um, in one of the slides, you talk about the multiple focus points for metasurface. Uh, could you elaborate on that and what applications uh, would oh, you use it for? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, let me uh, find that uh, slide. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it should be this one. The multiple focal points. Tell me, tell me this one. 
I'm not sure. For this one, yeah, this one, you know, the, the multiple, yeah, you can see the different uh, uh, focal points where you can control the position state of the light. Yes, regarding the application, uh, so I think, uh, for example, maybe you can use that for kind of, uh, you know, the illumination you know, light. For example, for, for some, you know, actually for the position or for the uh, focal points, we can engineer that either along this direction or any or any point we can do that. You know, the, along the optical axis for this one, actually we can also, you know, kind of manipulate, I think, uh, in a 2D, for example, for this observation plane, on the same observation plane at different places, we can also do that. I'm thinking probably that can also be used for, you know, the, you know, like a Rama scattering or something, for example, if you use the different uh, uh, polarization uh, of the light, you know, at a, a pixel level or to, to illuminate your, your sample, or probably you can see maybe uh, different, uh, you know, effects. I'm not uh, very confident with this uh, application. And for my previous uh, uh, visiting scholar, he used that for the terahertz imaging. Uh, so he, he used, uh, also got some very uh, interesting uh, results. Oh, the, the, other, the other question. How much efficiency have a current metal lens device from a broadband wavelength illumination? Oh, this is a very good question. <laughs> okay. Yes, for the metal lens design with the metal surface, uh, it's, um, it's very, you can uh, have more degrees of freedom. You can control, uh, for example, like a provision and also uh, the dispersion. Uh, you can also, you know, uh, develop achromatic uh, metal lenses. You can you can do that. So how to regarding the efficiency? So if for a single wavelength, the efficiency uh, is much higher with a dilating metal surface. You can easily achieve eighty percent. Um, but for the acrobatic, you know, achromatic uh, uh, lenses, uh, the efficiency it also depends on the bandwidth. Uh, there are two papers. One published. Uh, uh, on these communications uh, from a uh, Capasso group. For that one, I couldn't remember clearly. So you can see, you know, the at different wavelengths, uh, there is a change uh, in the efficiency. Uh, so around, I think maybe maybe more than thirty percent. Definitely, you can see uh, you have a, you have to compromise between you know the bandwidth and also the efficiency. Oh, okay. Uh, the other question, what's the typical efficiency of metal surface that uh, you the geometric fees to give you the functionality you want? Uh, David, this is uh, another very good question. Uh, for a pure geometric phase, um, if we really want to improve the efficiency, for its, uh, its nanopillar, it can function as a half wheel plate so in that case, you know, the theoretical, you know, uh, calculation is very, uh, you know, the efficiency is very high. You can, uh, with the uh, gallium nitride, maybe you can achieve maybe even 90%. Uh, I think, you know, with just a pure geometric phase. Oh, sorry, uh, let's, let's see another question. Could you briefly introduce the designing process for non-uniform uh, metal surface, do you normally start off with an uh, individual? Okay. Okay, for the metal surface, uh, for, the, for the design process, uh, so at the very beginning, we have to optimize, you know, the feature size. For the feature size, we can use uh, the console uh, console or maybe um, CST to we can, uh, we can optimize. We can try to find the efficiency. So which efficiency is in, uh, much uh, it is acceptable. Of course, we have to to you know to consider you know the the capability of our nano fabrication facilities as well. Then maybe they're not perfect, but you know it really depends on our application. Um, you are right. Yes, definitely. We we start off with the individual resonator, and uh, 
and then arrange the layout for metals. Exactly, yes, that's correct. Uh, for example, for a metal lens design, for example, here, I'll give you an example. Uh, the required feed profile may be like this. Then for geometric phase, by controlling the orientation of uh, the nano, uh, uh, nano rods here, so we can generate you know, the, uh, the feed profile. So first, uh, we, uh, can, we, we, uh, we, we, based on you know, the, uh, uh, the functionality of the device, we get the feed profile. Then we uh, use this uh, by controlling the nano rod orientation, uh, we can uh, develop, you know, the uh, metal surface device. Okay, uh, another question. One general question, how do you come up with a shape of the metal surface besides the, the usual, usual circular and, and the rectangular shape? Do you use a algorithm? Oh, okay. This is a very good question. Uh, regarding the for the structure we used for the metal surface, uh, for geometric phase you can see here we use a, you, know, you can see the cross section is a, a rectangular a rectangle, is part of this insensitive. So since in the the geometric phase uh, is associated to the part of this change, and for sometimes you know we. Do not you know like you know processing sensitive you know functionality. We prefer to use a uh, circular uh, nanopillars, circular nanopillars by controlling the diameter of uh, the nano circular nanopillars. We can generate the processing insensitive uh, devices. Uh, that's a very good question. Thank you very much. Uh, do you use the same just chips? Yes, for the uh, regarding the uh, the algorithm, I think uh, uh, so. You know, for usually, I think for the lens lens design, it's very straightforward. For the hologram design, uh, we use uh, also use you know uh, the. The conventional, you know, the uh, algorithm like you know GS algorithm, we can uh, we can design that. It's more, is it more iteration based on? Uh, yes, it's best in, if you want to achieve you know good uh, performance, good performance uh, devices. So for the optimization process, uh, I think uh, the our effort, you know, uh, you know, is is is, is valuable. Any other questions? Okay, so uh, the devices here, I uh, demonstrate uh, most of them, you can see they are not active uh, uh, devices. Uh, for the active metal surface devices, they are very attractive. Uh, so recently, very recently, we uh, I have, I have already collaborated with uh, uh, some people who are specialized in uh, liquid crystal stuff, and uh, hopefully we can get uh, more interesting uh, results. So, any other questions? If no further questions, shall we stop here? Okay, yeah, that's great. Thank you very much, Sam, for your thank talk. You. And thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you very much. Have a nice weekend.